Howdy folks, I'm a rascally rouge rogue radish raising radical red roses. I'm Amber and color me impressed. <laughs> and here's some more radical red roses for us to raise. All right, folks, our first letter is titled, My husband is mad that I have a higher IQ than him and says that he is not attracted to me anymore. And this one is from True Off My Chest, so let's get into it. As the title says, he came home one day and gave me logins to some IQ test and I scored higher than him. First, he was in disbelief, then he was a bit sulky. I thought the whole thing was stupid and I never thought or experienced that I'm smarter than him and I never understood the logic of these tests. Anyways, since then, he's changed. He doesn't want to cuddle or kiss me or anything. Last Saturday, we attended a birthday party for my little nephew and my husband spent the evening chatting up my sister-in-law's sister who's very pretty. When we got home, I just had it up to here with him and I started crying because he ignored me for at least three weeks now and he's flirting with other people. He denied everything. He denied being changed with me since the test, but I wasn't backing down this time. I told him that I wasn't stupid and that he stopped being affectionate the day of that test. Well, he finally admitted that he was turned off by the fact and he wasn't attracted to me. I asked him if he still wasn't attracted to me and why. I haven't changed. I'm still me. He apologized and said that he would put his stuff together and that he knows how silly this is. But he's been very wary around me since. I still think that he is turned off by me. What can I do? All right, folks, what do you think about this one? Unfortunately, OP, there's not a lot you can do. The best thing you can do is suggest that he goes to therapy. Oh, yeah. This is a problem with him and his brain, not anything to do with you. This is a him problem and not a you problem. But if he wants to go off and flirt and cheat behind your back, then, I mean, you can serve him some divorce papers. Yes, yeah, that too. Like, definitely, the way he's reacting to this is totally ridiculous. I mean, IQ tests don't tell you a lot about someone. There are so many types of intelligence, and you're right that it hasn't changed anything about you. IQ tests, like Amber was saying, aren't really a great measure of someone's potential. It doesn't really give a complete picture. And he wanted you to take this test for some weird reason and i don't understand his reasoning behind that i mean i assume it's just to prove for once and for all that he's smarter and that he couldn't fathom that op was actually the smarter one he is feeling vulnerable for one reason or another and that's not again op's problem like this is all on him if he feels like he needs to have power over you because he thought he was smarter than you and now he doesn't know what to do because now you're smarter than him and blah 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 this is all really ridiculous and absurd type of reasoning on his part it is and it doesn't excuse his behavior like you can have tough feelings and it's on you how you deal with them like he needs to get himself to therapy asap and if he keeps being cold to you and flirting with other people behind your back or to your face too then maybe it's time to kick him to the curb yeah I also like how he's denying this whole thing and he's acting like OP is dumb, but, mm -hmm. but OP is like, I'm, sp I, I, I'm not fooled by your shenanigans here. I mean, here. it's gaslighting at its <laughs> finest. No, no, that's totally not what's happening. Yeah. So OP, I really feel bad for you in this situation. It's a horrible situation and he is, really needs to work on himself and improve. So anyhow, take care and good luck. And Zeus McCracken says, wait till he finds out how much bigger... <laughs> your junk is then yes <laughs> and op's laugh dying and zeus mccracken says absolutely meant that as a compliment to you sorry you're experiencing this it is pretty terrible and op of course says i took it as a compliment and mini rose nine says just curious is he like this with all aspects of your life your career earnings accomplishments and op replies no, not really. He doesn't mind that I make more money than he does because we both love our careers. My career is not academic. His is. <gasps> oh. That, He's one of those professors. Uh, that answers a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I know who your husband is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Goes to show that a fancy piece of paper doesn't always say that much. Yeah. And Abercrombie Select 2141 says, Your husband sounds like an alpha that has a very fragile ego. 
don't you know what you're supposed to be dumb? And OP replies, uh, you made me think about Tate's chin and now I'm turned off. And one librarian, 4305, says, stop wasting your time with this dude. For one, online IQ tests are total nonsense. Proper IQ tests have to be administered by a professional and are incredibly difficult to do without bias. Secondly, you just learned that he's attracted to you because he thinks he's better than you. That is such an ugly thing to want. I'd be gone immediately, and you should be too. And OP replies, and here I was thinking that he was attracted to me because of my perfect butt. Turns out it was just because I'm dumber. Or at least he thought I was, anyways. <laughs> at least OP has a sense of humor about the whole thing. And Chaco says, Is his number below 90? In which case, give him what he wants, take all his money and leave. And OP replies, He did 116 and I did 134. I remember doing one in college and it was 131. I guess he's probably just really uh, upset that OP... Maybe... Oh, so I'm guessing what happened is... OP mentioned this at one point in time because he probably asked about it and she's like, oh, I don't know, I got like 131 on an IQ test or something like that. And he was in the complete disbelief and probably arranged to have an online IQ test and then when she actually beat him in it, he's like, foiled rats. All right, folks, our next letter is titled, I'm a 24-year-old female and my fiance, a 32-year-old male, is banned from every major bank and payment processor, but tells me because it's a conspiracy against him. Run. Yeah. Run, OP? What are you still doing here? <laughs> You're dating a criminal. Context. Both religious, don't believe in long-term dating, known each other for eight months, engaged for two. My fiancé works from home and has always been very secretive regarding his finances. He has repeatedly told me that it's not my place to know how he makes his money, but he has briefly mentioned that it is apparently relating to cryptocurrency. Needless to say, he makes a lot of money doing this. Run, OP! Yeah. Run! One of the main reasons that I have been trying to get him to be more honest with me is because I have just recently found out that he's banned from quite literally every major bank and every major payment processor. It's so bad to the point where three months ago he tried to open a personal checking account with a small local bank and they first allowed him to but then closed his account after the first week for reasons that my fiance still won't tell me. The whole situation was a mess because he had something like $600,000 in that account and they had to investigate the funds for over three months before they were finally released last Friday. This situation was kind of my breaking point regarding his financial secrecy. I told him that he needed to be more honest with me regarding his finances, especially since we're going to be married in two months. And he told me some disturbing things that sound like conspiratorial delusions that you would hear from QAnon members. The gist was that the deep state and the elite who control the global banking system are out to get him because he's in the process of exposing them to the world. When he was saying these things, I was waiting for him to tell me that he was joking, but he never did. And when he was done talking, I just stared at him. Here's the thing. My fiance is not crazed right wing QAnon supporter or anything. And I can tell and list so many things that are absolutely great about him. He's someone who I want to be with forever, and I have never felt this in love with anyone before. But this rapidly devolving situation is breaking my mind. I keep asking myself how this will work once we are married, and if he will ever become fully open with me once we're married, since perhaps he will trust me more then. I don't know what to do, and I need to know what to do to think about the next step from here. All right, folks, what do you think about this one? Do not marry this man. This is a giant walking red flag. Like, first of all, when you marry someone, you are financially intertwined to some degree. Even if you keep separate finances, you can potentially be held accessible uh, if your partner is committing financial crimes and they have any reason to suspect you could be in on it, even if you don't know. There are some pretty glaring red flags here. OP, you seem a little blinded by the fact that you really love him and that he's such a great guy, but you've only known him for eight months and this is still within the honeymoon period of the relationship. And I understand that your religious beliefs are that you want to not date long term and so it's not an option for you to 
date for long term. But again, you've been engaged for two months and you're getting married in two months. This is not a good situation. And I do fear that you can be held liable for some of his misdeeds if it comes out that you know about some of this stuff, right? And if he does tell you about something that's illegal, then what are you going to do at that point in time, right? Then you have to go to the police because he's doing illegal stuff. Right. And so, like, if you cannot have open and honest conversations about with your partner about finances, if you don't even really know what they do for a living, do not marry this person. Do not tie their life to them in such a hard legal fashion. Like, I wouldn't even continue the relationship at this point because of how secretive he's being. Mm hmm. This sounds like something like money laundering, mm -hmm. to be quite honest. They don't just stop you from being able to use banks for no reason, mm -hmm. right? But anyhow, take care and good luck. And Jimson Weed says, get out while you can. His words are not those of a sane person. And once you get married, that will be your nonsense too. A good relationship needs transparency, especially on topics as sensitive as money. How does he make any income if he's banned from the entire system? How does that work? Also, I would stay away from anyone making money out of cryptos because that means he's either gullible or he's about to be broke or a crook who might get locked up one day. Both are bad husband material, in my opinion. And OP replies, apparently he gets paid in Bitcoin and converts it or something. I don't know. And when I try to get him to elaborate, he shuts down the conversation. So yeah, I mean, if he has a lot of money in crypto and he can exchange it into the dollars, that's pretty much how he's probably getting paid and how he's taking and extracting money because there are services that will trade Bitcoin for dollar and vice versa. And index 9999 says, do not marry someone who cannot share their financial information. They are hiding it for a reason. All right, folks, our next very odd letter is titled, Am I a Jerk for Impregnating My Female Friend's Wife? And this is going to be a wild ride, folks. I did not mess up today. I messed up on February 20th, 21st, and 22nd of 2020. But the results are going to be hitting me soon. My wife and I have been married for 15 years. We married right out of high school and have been together for what seemed forever, as we grew up together. Having stayed in the same small town, we naturally maintained contact with many of our childhood friends. One of those friends, we'll call her Rosani, met and married her wife at school and returned to live where she grew up. In 2019, her wife got artificial insemination because they wanted to have a baby. Sadly, she had a miscarriage in the first trimester. They could not afford another procedure. Well, they hosted a New Year Eve's party and we attended. While at the party, the conversation turned to kids and the fact that we do not have any by choice, mainly my wife's. After a while, Rosani told my wife about the miscarriage and seemingly joked about borrowing me to father of a baby since they could not afford to try again in a clinic. My wife, who by this time was well into being drunk, agreed. A few weeks later, Rosani approached me and told me that her wife was monitoring her ovulation cycle and that they would call me. It was made clear that it would be as clinical as having adult intimate time could be. I told my wife and she reacted poorly, stating that it had been a joke and that we could not be serious. And I messed up. I could not find out how to break this to Rosani, who seemed so excited about having a shot at a baby. I went to her home three days in a row <laughs> and <laughs> I could say that the adult intimate time was underwhelming. She really did make it as unsatisfying and clinical as possible. I'm buying this folks. <laughs> totally sold on his story so far. <laughs> Everything went well. Mid-November she had a baby who slightly resembles me. Fast forward to last week and Rosani calls me and tells me that they are divorcing and since there is no father on the birth certificate and her wife is a stay-at-home mom, she was advised to name me as the father. Lo and behold, I get a court summons to determine the paternity of the 20-month-old child and of course, I have no doubt that it's mine and I have no idea how to even tell my wife much less explain my thought process. All right, folks, what do you think of this one? Uh, OP, just tell her. 
At this point in time, the only thing you can do is tell her the full story. Do not leave out any details. Do not try to justify yourself. Just lay out what you did and let her have her feelings. If she wants to walk from this relationship because she doesn't want to have any obligation to this child or because you cheated or any number of things, that's totally valid. So this is why you always work through a fertility clinic with contracts, with paperwork, with all of those kinds of things. If anyone ever is approached with a situation like that, this is my advice to you. Do not do what OP did because this happens a lot from what I understand. Mm -hmm. And even if you work through a fertility clinic, sometimes people will try to still come after you, even if you're just a, a random donor or something like that. It and, really depends on the laws and stuff like that. Yeah, sometimes they do win too. So it is an important thing to keep in mind. And if you're in a partnered situation, it's important that you have your partner's full consent because of the legal ramifications. Mm -hmm. And also in this case, because you actually were doing something that would be considered cheating. Yeah, you were very much in the wrong here. I think that you need to, of course, like Amber said, come clean to your wife. She's probably going to leave you, but that's how life goes sometimes. You made decisions, you made poor decisions, you went behind her back. There were, she told you that she didn't want you to do this and then you did. So you're just going to have to fess up at this point in time. So anyhow, take care and good luck. And Opportuna says, well, 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 this should be a good one. <laughs> And Opportuna says, absolutely, we, the audience, are going to be the sole beneficiary. And I, I guess that's probably what that deleted comment has to say, something about that. And Jersey Guy 195 says, you still went through it, even though your wife thought it was a joke. And HSOX05 says, it's okay. It was clinical and unsatisfying. <laughs> Yeah, he only did it three times, <laughs> says Booty Giuliani 420. <laughs> Somewhat appropriate name. <laughs> I, you know, that's the thing is like, he makes it sound like, oh, it was so clinical and everything, but he went through it three times, three times. This wasn't just like a, I accidentally made a mistake here type of thing. This was literally premeditated three days in a row. Mm -hmm. Well, and also he valued his friends feeling over his wife here. Like your partner should be your number one. What they have to say in reproductive decisions should weigh over your friends. Yeah. All right, folks, in our last letter, this one was requested by Angus King. Not to be confused with the main state senator, I'm sure. Our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for giving away my wife's espresso machine and grinder without her permission? And this one was posted a little while ago, but uh, they requested it, so we'll read it. My wife thinks that I'm a jerk. My buddies are on my side since it was a mistake. I don't know what to do. My wife, Jane, loves coffee. She used to work as a barista before getting into corporate job, but she carried it forward and regularly makes this coffee with fancy patterns. She has a really fancy espresso machine with a grinder and they're her pride and joy. We often joke that it's the third wheel in our marriage given how much she's interested in the drink. I thought for an early birthday present, it would be nice to get her a new one. I saw the seller who can refit espresso machines and customize them, so I thought that it would be nice to get her one that has an olive and sage accents. I'm quite proud of myself for thinking of it, and it would look a lot nicer in our kitchen. Hers right now is stainless steel and reflective, which stands out like an eyesore. So I get in touch with the seller, and he agrees. And he also helped me refit two Porta filters handles with olive wood. One of them has her initials carved into it, and the other says, Happy birthday, darling, with a heart. I was going to give this to her today and then show her the machine. I also got her a new grinder that matched the espresso machine. Thoughtful, right? Well, there was an issue with the delivery, so her new machine got delayed. My buddy came by late last night to pick up her machine and grinder, which I let him have because of the new one. And then in the morning, she would have to come downstairs to see the new machine. Now, there is no machine. She flipped out asking me what I had done because it was pretty obvious that it was missing. So I said that I had given it away to my friend because he needed it. I didn't want to ruin the surprise. She asked me why and I didn't think to tell her and I didn't know what to answer. So I just said that his broke and he needed one. We went back and forth for a bit and then she said that she was going to go to the cafe and she left. 
She came back and then I forfeited what my plan was and she was thankful but still annoyed that I had given away her machine without at least asking her because it had sentimental value to her. Her brother bought it for her as a gift for her landing the corporate job. My view is that it would have ruined the surprise if I had told her. And the shipping only showed that it was delayed this morning. I did message my buddy to see if we could get it back for now until the new one comes, but he says that his parents are using it and I don't want to inconvenience them over a misunderstanding. Am I the jerk? All right, folks, what do you think? Yeah, you're the jerk. You don't get to give away other people's property without their consent. Mm -hmm. Like the gift idea might have been fine on its own if you know this is something that she wants. Yeah. Uh, although it seems like you weren't clear that the other one also had sentimental value to her. Yeah, you just don't get to give away her property. That's where you really messed up. Yeah. OP, you could have gotten her the gift and kept the old machine and then asked her what she wanted to do with mm -hmm. it. And she may not even have liked the present that you had gotten, right? Maybe she will like it better, maybe she wouldn't, but you kind of didn't give her the choice of whether or not she wanted to get rid of her old machine. Right, you just assumed yours was a superior choice, and that's never a good way to go, especially with something that someone uses as regularly as your wife uses this. Yeah, because there might be something that's inconvenient about it, or it might not be exactly what she's wanting, or any number of things, and then she would be without a machine for even longer if you had to go and reorder a new one, or any number of things. And also, it just isn't your proper like I know you wanted to do your friend a favor but it was hers to do with as she saw fit so she could have kept both machines mm -hmm. she could have you know done any number of things but it was not your right to give it away yeah so anyhow take care and good luck all right folks it is tea time grab your beverages of choice I've got some tea right here and Amber she's got a piece of paper I was so inspired by our tongue twister what do 90s veggies say when something awesome happens? I can tell you exactly what 90s veggies say when something op awesome happens. They say, we are 90s vegetables and we've been rotted for a long time. We're zombie vegetables. <laughs> Brains. Totally radish call. <laughs> I guess so. That would be something that they would say. And I have Mega Mint. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Friday. Congratulations. We made it to the end of the week. Get out your poppers. Celebrate. It's the weekend. Amber, we need some kind of moral advice and or guidance. <laughs> and please have it something that would be written on a coffee cup. <laughs> Well, this is a coffee cup, so I'm going to give this uh, message that a coffee cup might have. I'm not saying I agree with it, but this seems like what you'd see in a coffee cup. Coffee, one of life's great greatest pleasures. Don't mess with that. Yeah, all right, I can get behind that. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you all tomorrow. Bye!